Hello everyone, today I will be discussing the best businesses to make money in GTA Online in the year 2023. I will be going over all businesses plus the heist just to make it fun. I will go over the pros and cons and find out which are good and which are bad. So let's get into it. First up, we have gun running. Gun running in the year 2023 is still a pretty good business, just as good as it was when it first released. It's a passive income business. Passive income businesses, really, you can't go wrong. Oh, I mean, there is one on this list where you can go wrong. I'll get into that later. But as far as gun running goes, gun running is pretty good. The overhead is relatively small. By the way, for pretty much all your businesses, you should never source supplies by doing the missions. You should always buy your supplies. It is simply quicker and more effective because in the time you spend doing that mission to get supplies, you could be doing a mission like say headhunter and be making 25,000 the money per minute you will make is more than just doing the mission in and of itself but as far as gun running goes you pretty much have to buy supplies four times pretty much to get a full stock and you will get a pretty nice bonus if you sell it in a populated lobby which i also recommend you do as well it'll make up for the cost of these supplies and give you a nice bonus on top of that and the gun running sell missions are probably some of the best ones in the game there is this one where you have to stick together with like three insurgents it's very hard to do solo if you get that mission i would advise you to just skip it leave the lobby or restart your game and do another one but aside from that gun running is still pretty good next up we have the mc businesses and i'm going to group all of them together because it's just easier that way and as far as they go i will say it's a similar situation to the gun running business your overhead is relatively small for most of the businesses um most of them you don't get too much as a full stock so you will be making most of your money in terms of bon bonuses for selling in populated lobbies and that will once again cover the cost of supplies and give you a nice bonus on top of that but if you're running a smaller business like counterfeit cash or weed or document forgery which is the only business in the mc businesses i would advise you don't do document forgery is so pointless it gives you no money your overhead is way too high for the amount of money you're making it's just bad so don't do it i would only do it for the nightclub and even then there's better options but as far as cocaine meth counterfeit cash weed whatever you want to do they are all pretty decent and you will be making a decent amount of money with all of them combined in my opinion this is a business best ran by using an arcade master terminal because you can you know watch over all of them from the arcade and you do not have to go to all businesses one by one to check supplies stock wherever you have it all at one term Terminal, which is very helpful plus if you have the arcade that everyone should have um i forgot where it's at but it's called the video jadon or something video jadon um you should have that arcade it's best for the casino heist it's best for everything it's in a pretty good spot and it's pretty cheap it's the most effective way to use the mc businesses at your disposal and overall the mc businesses are still pretty good as well Next up, we have Special Cargo, and Special Cargo is kind of a mixed bag. It is a business best ran by using your friend's help. If you have two other friends that will help you run your business, uh, your Special Cargo business, I would really only advise you to do this business with them because doing this by yourself kind of sucks. First, I'm going to address people saying, well, this business is very good when it's double money or whatever, and I will say on paper, it looks pretty good as well but the overhead doubles as well as the payout when it goes double money because yes, you are getting double the payout, but the special cargo crates themselves actually cost two times as much as well, which really digs into profits. It makes your overhead double. And I think overall as a solo player, you shouldn't be doing the special cargo business because not even to mention, if you do a three crate mission and it's a separate mission for each crate, not a separate mission, but all the crates are broken up into one. You, They're not all in one vehicle. You will probably have to destroy the other two crates and just take the one, take it back to the cargo warehouse and finish the mission that way because it's the easiest, it's the most effective way to do it because you will inherently have to go back and forth six times to get to the crates, back to your warehouse, to the crate, back to your warehouse, to the crate, back to your warehouse to get all the crates so if you do get a mission like this just blow up the two crates take one back to your warehouse and then go back to your office redo another one and hope that it has a car or a vehicle because that's really the only way to do this effectively as a solo player and it also takes way too long to fill up a large warehouse i think the limit is 113 crates that is way too much takes way too long and overall you really shouldn't be doing special crates anymore in 2023 unless you have two friends to help you and even then i would advise you to do a different business on this list Next up, we have vehicle cargo. Vehicle cargo can be decent, but it's not very lucrative. You can make money, but it's not that much. Also, I should mention, I think two years ago or maybe one and a half years ago, the special cargo or the vehicle cargo, I should say, kind of got a rework. 
Um, it's when they added the missions for the CEO office and the bunker, like the cell missions that give you like 50,000 or whatever. When they added that, they slightly reworked the vehicle cargo. And I think it was for the worst because it gives you a longer cooldown and it does make the missions slightly harder, which doesn't help because as a solo player, these missions were already pretty difficult because you're battling Rockstar's terrible AI who purposely try to crash into you. They make it blatantly obvious that they do. They don't try to hide it whatsoever. And at the start of the mission, if you're doing it in an environment, by owing lobby which is probably the best way to do this one as well you will have npcs that spawn there will be eight cars total two people in each car so 16 enemies you have to kill that you have to kill there because if you don't kill them you let them fall you they'll damage your car you could probably lose about five thousand in value which paired up with the twenty thousand investment cost to customize the car and everything you're only getting about seventy five thousand dollars which is really not good especially for the time invested you have to source the car sell it do all that and seventy five thousand if you don't take care of the enemies is a bad payout so overhead being high paired with a long cooldown i would advise you to not do vehicle cargo in 2023 even with friends because once again there is a better business on this list for that now my personal favorite to talk about the acid lab not my favorite business to do particularly because i'll get into that in a second but basically the acid lab is probably the worst business that they have ever added to gta online and i'm gonna go ahead and explain why basically because if it is not double money and you're not getting two times the money that you are supposed to get for the normal stock and it's not two times weekend or whatever and you fill up your acid lab you get around three hundred thousand or whatever something like that excluding bonuses that you get from selling in a populated lobby which once again i advise you do overhead is way too high for the acid lab you will probably have to buy two bundles of supplies so like 140,000 around that is already half of your payout just into supplies once again without bonuses maybe with bonuses you get around 500,000 or whatever but even then 150,000 out of that is way too much and the acid lab also takes a pretty long time as well if you forget to boost production whenever you can it's just too time intensive for the amount of pay you get there are much better businesses to do and even though the business is passive it's probably the worst passive business because once again overhead is way too high for the amount of pay you get and overall it's just a bad business however i will say this has probably the best sell mission in the game because you get a pretty fast bike it's pretty hard to hit on a mark ii and it is pretty decent so i will give it that but everything else absolutely sucks about the acid lab don't do it in 2023 next up we have my personal favorite on this list which is the nightclub as someone who does a lot of you know recording for youtube obviously just doing even doing this or getting the footage for everything i had my nightclub running in the background and i made a pretty good amount of product i made around 600 to 700 thousand i forgot where it was between that line but somewhere around there and that's a good amount of money for doing basically nothing i don't have to resupply it i don't have to mess with it i don't have to do nothing the only thing the nightclub has that you have to occasionally redo is the popularity for the nightclub daily income safe which gives you around fifty thousand every 48 minutes in real life which i would advise you don't do unless it's like two times popularity or something or they do something weird like that because there used to be a bug in the game that basically allowed you to keep popularity high all the time because all you had to do was walk out of your nightclub walk back in and there would be some guy passed out you have to take him to his house or something and that's it and this mission would constantly replay and redo so you pretty much didn't have to worry about that but now me personally i almost never get this mission i don't know if they patch it out or whatever i'm pretty sure they did because i always used to get it now i pretty much never get it you have to manually resupply i mean uh redo the popularity mission by going to the computer those missions take way too long and they suck it's just bad so don't do those missions for popularity but if you stick to the main strong point of the nightclub which is the passive income for pretty much you not having to do anything as long as you have all the mc businesses and whatnot you will be good because this is a very good business to have as a veteran player if you're a newer player i would say don't go for the nightclub because you do have to invest in the mc businesses first in order to really make your buck count on the nightclub because without those the nightclub is pretty much useless and you really need those to make it an effective business but otherwise if you've been playing gta online for a minute you have the bunker you have the mc businesses you have the arcade i would definitely get a nightclub it's very much well worth it and you will make a good amount of money on the side as well next up we have the business i've been referring to all this video pretty much which is the hangar if you have friends this is the business to do especially when it is double money when this is double money this is by hands down the best way to make money in gta online legitimately at least <laughs> um in the game because with friends you get four crates each time I forgot how much they are worth. I think they're worth 30,000 because they used to be 20,000, then they changed it or whatever. 
I don't know, somewhere around that ballpark, but it's very good when it's double money. Without double money, it's not as good, but it's still pretty decent if you and your friends want to just mess around and make a little bit of money on the side. It will be mostly you making the most money because, I mean, it's your hanger, but you can go back and forth because the cooldown between missions is like three minutes or something. Um, so you can do one for yours, do one for your friends, and just keep on doing that. And you guys will make a lot of money for not that much time invested as well. And overall, I would say the hanger is a good business to have if you have friends which i know is getting more and more hard to come across in 2023 if you're a new player with not that much friends i would say go for the bunker and go for the mc businesses over this because you will just make more money that way and it is also when you're new it is better to make money by yourself because there's less money to share with other people and it's just more effective overall but as a whole the hanger business in 2023 is not too bad it pays a good amount of money and especially good amount of money when it's double money once again when it is double money everyone should be doing this business you have absolutely no excuse not to the hangar is not that expensive there's not a lot of overhead because source uh the source cost for cargo is actually free so there is zero overhead all of that makes it a pretty good business next up we have the auto shop probably my number one recommendation to newer players is buying an auto shop because the contracts are very easy to do i can do it with like a regular pistol it's not that hard guns are not a necessity to do it at all they're very easy to do overhead is not that expensive um you're just paying for the auto shop cost but after that the contracts are absolutely free you can do it whenever you want and they frequently go triple money, which is very good. The union depository contract will give you $900,000 when it is triple money, which is absolutely fantastic. I even do it sometimes because it only takes about an hour to do those. Um, the union depository one and for 900,000 that's a pretty good deal well it's more like 810,000 because that one guy and the other annoying chick i forgot their name the annoying couple that you always see in the auto shop they take 90,000 but even then 810,000 still pretty good but even when it's not triple money 300,000 for a union depository contract with not that much overhead is pretty good and it also gives you a free 10 car garage as well which i know as a new player is probably useless but you also do have the bonus of uh, the customer cars that come in every so often which also do help you recoup some money, not a ton. Your main money maker here is the auto shop contracts, but as a new player, get it. As an older player, I would say don't get the auto shop unless you want 10 extra car spaces, then go ahead and get it. Next up, we have the agency. There's a lot of nuance within the agency because you have the security contracts, you have the payphone hits, you have the main contract, which is the Dr. Dre one, um, where you have to do the missions and then help Dr. Dre recover his lost song or something. Um, and though the main contract, the Dr. Dre one is not that good. I would say don't do it unless it's double money. It's not super ineffective. Like you could do it and make a decent amount of money for the time invested, but there's better options. You may as well do something else like a casino heist. I know that does take a friend, but honestly, I would just say don't do the main part of this. Payphone hits are pretty good though. Payphone hits often go double money and 140,000 for like five minutes of work is very good in between waiting for missions or something you could do it real quick five minutes get a free hundred forty thousand, and that's pretty good however i can't say the same for the security contracts the security contracts are very bad they take like way too long and they're kind of confusing as well not to mention it's complete rng to which one you get and you can get hard ones and you can get pretty easy ones and it'll be the same pay so i think that's pretty stupid it should have more variety in terms of that but aside from that the agency is overall pretty bad unless you just want to have a chill time and see franklin lamar and dr dre that's a pretty cool storyline i do like it i hope they carry out more you know celebrity things like that in the future i think there was supposed to be one with rosalia or Rizzo i don't know i don't know how to say her name i'm so sorry to my hispanics out there as a fellow hispanic i have absolutely no idea how to say her name but i think that was a leak or whatever something made up i don't even know if it was a leak maybe i'm just tripping on my mind but anyways i hope they do more of those in the future but as of right now the agency is pretty bad unless you are a veteran player who just wants to make a little bit of money while having a little bit of fun if you're a new player don't do this it's pretty bad there are other better businesses for you to do next up we have the facility which is the main way of making money for the doomsday heist the doomsday heists are okay if you've never done them before because there are bonuses associated with doing them for the first time as a crew member as a leader not to mention if you do the elite ones but the elite challenges are way too hard the criminal mastermind is borderline impossible um i tried to do the criminal mastermind like a year ago when they first introduced the um like the I, I don't even know what it's called it's like the scoreboard that keeps track of all your like accomplishments or whatever and the second one was literally impossible it would stop counting my progress so i didn't do that but going back to the doomsday heist they're pretty bad to do if you've already done them if you don't have a facility but you've already done them as a crew member i would say don't get it because honestly even if you do them and get the bonus as a leader it's not a big enough bonus to incentivize you to buy a whole facility that you then have to do the missions for and by the way the doomsday heist missions are probably the most annoying missions to do in all of gta online 
um act one and act three are way too hard act two is pretty easy to do i would say i think they should make that easier but aside from that the doomsday heists are pretty bad i wouldn't do them if you've already done them which i mean you know it's kind of contradictory you already did them uh, but i wouldn't buy a facility if you don't have one but you've done it as a crew member and if you're a new player i wouldn't buy a facility as well because it's just too expensive next up we have the arcade but more like the casino heist because once again it's really the only way to make money with the arcade aside from the safe which you don't have to do anything thankfully um you just have to fill up your arcade with machines and that's pretty much it i think it has to be three different varieties of machines so it can't be the same machine you have to buy like three different ones fill up your arcade and you will make um 5, every 48 minutes which is not bad but i mean i guess it's not good either you know what i mean it could buy you like some body armor in 2023 um but as far as the casino heist goes the casino heist is pretty good it's honestly my preferred heist of making money because the ko perico heist got absolutely nerfed to the ground i will talk about that in a second i think the casino heist replaced that because the casino heist while it does take an extra player if you split it 50 50 and get art you are both still making around 900 000, which is a pretty good amount even for both of you it doesn't take too long to do if the other person helps you with the preps um, if it's a random you could give them less than 50 because you're not obligated to give them 50 because they didn't help you with the preps if it's your friend you're still not obligated if you're a bad friend um but if you want to be a decent friend you can split a 50 50 and you'll still make a decent amount of money both of you the only thing is i don't know if they nerfed this but i seem to always get cash on the casino heist i'm not sure if they did that a while ago or recently but i always get cash i could rarely ever get gold or art i almost never get gold i get art sometimes but i mostly get cash cash is pretty terrible on the casino heist because it's heavy you can't sprint and you don't make a lot of money with it as well it's pretty hard to get all of the cash with just two people i'm pretty sure you can do it but you'll have to get pretty lucky with the spawns and you'll have to be pretty good as well also a little side note don't buy this arcade this this dude bought the Puerto bay arcade this is why you don't buy it when the finale comes you have to drive all the way down to the city in this terrible oh, by the way don't do this entrance as well do the group sex thing clever naming rockstar um but yeah do that it'll be more efficient and don't buy the Puerto bay arcade the Puerto bay arcade is absolutely terrible and it's not that much cheaper than the one in the city so just get the one in the city please it's not that expensive and you will make way more money with it as well and more efficiently overall if you're a new player i would say don't get the arcade once again get the auto shop and then you can work your way up to the bunker and if you really want to then you could get the arcade but honestly right now new players shouldn't get the arcade if you're a newer or a older player and you have some experience with gta online you have the business businesses running in the background I would say get the arcade if you have a friend because it will be more efficient that way and overall with two people the arcade is not a bad business to have this next one is not exactly a business but i thought it'd still be worth noting it is the og heist and i mentioned this in this video because the og heist got a payout buff a long time ago um i'm pretty sure it's when the new generation consoles came out xbox series x s playstation 5 etc that make it today honestly not too bad to do if you're a new player and you and your friends just got gta online um you pretty much start with an apartment now i'm pretty sure um in the starter pack they give you an apartment some car or whatever and a little bit of cash you can do the og heist and get a pretty good amount of money because there are the bonuses associated with it not to mention if you are the leader you will take the most money because you are a good friend and you could also do criminal mastermind if you guys are really up for a challenge but if you're a new player i would say save it for another time look for more experienced people than your friends because they're honestly bad and you should not play with them i'm only kidding but overall the og heists are pretty decent i guess series a is not that good humane labs is a little bit too hard for the amount of money you get especially if you're a new player you're going to be way too confused and you're going to replay it 15 times and someone in your group will quit before you guys finish it and you'll have to do it all again the next day which is never fun and uh pacific standard is kind of the same thing but you do get more money and it is pretty much the same difficulty as the humane labs in my opinion so if you are to do these in 2023 i would say try to only do pacific standard because the setups are not too hard there's many ways to do the setups pretty effectively and the payout is pretty good if you are the leader doing it with the randoms because once again you are not obligated to give them a lot of money because they didn't help you but if you've been playing for a while and you're not that new of a player i would say don't do the og heist unless it's like double money or something which they almost never do um it's not that effective there are better businesses to get money with next up we have the ko perico the one and only this is why i saved it for last okay i'm gonna start off by addressing the nerfs the nerfs came recently again i feel like they've nerfed this heist like five times already and they keep on nerfing it to the ground which makes no sense because why would you nerf something you spent so much developer hours into developing and putting into the game and making it for the players like i don't understand they completely nerfed it into the ground it's not viable to do anymore if you're still doing the ko perico heist in 2023 
I would advise you to not do it because you have to wait like three days to do it effectively because there's like a two hour cooldown or something to do the heist. And not to mention, even if you wait for that cooldown, you will most likely get to Kiwa because you have to wait three days to even out the odds again to even have a chance at getting the pink diamond, which is the best way to make money with the KO Perico heist. If you avoid all the cooldowns aside from the two hour one and just get to Kiwa, it's so bad. And the Kiwa, like the payouts across the board got completely nerfed as well. So tequila is even worse than it was at the start of the Kill Perico heist, which is great because the tequila was already the worst one to begin with. I mean, the only redeeming quality that the Kill Perico heist has is that the setups are very easy to do. They've been refined to a science at this point. You can find a YouTube video about every one and find the most effective way to do it. But it's just not worth it in the end because you have to wait so long. You have to wait three days to do it effectively if you don't want tequila because tequila is terrible. And I don't know, it's just overall a pretty bad way to make money in 2023. It's so sad because it was the best way to make money in 2023 at the start of the year because it was nerfed back then, but it wasn't too nerfed. It was still viable somewhat, but now it's been nerfed down to the ground, the absolute ground, and there is no reviving it whatsoever unless they go back on the nerfs, which is highly unlikely of Rockstar to do because it cut way too much into Rockstar profit margins. Um, people who were to buy shark cards were like, hey, I can just do the Kill Perico heist. It's pretty easy. It's pretty fun, honestly. There's many ways to do it. And I will want to buy a shark card for like 20 bucks. And I'll just do that. Which, of course, the investors didn't like. So they took it off. They completely nerfed it to the ground. And now we have what we have now. The Kill Perico heist is pretty terrible in 2023. And in 2024, it will also probably be pretty terrible. So don't do it even then. Regardless, if you're a new player, old player, just don't do the Kill Perico heist. It is terrible. And that is it, everyone. The best and the worst businesses to make money in GCA Online in the year 2023. Hopefully, this video helped you out a little bit. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I will respond to you. If I don't respond to you and I heart it, that means I saw it. And, you know, I just appreciate you for commenting. But thank you all for watching and goodbye.